Now we're talking about culture and that the traditional ruler of Enugu Aguleri, Anambra East Council area, is a Chukwemeka area, has reassured of his commitment towards promoting the Igbo culture and tradition. Is area made this known at his palace at Aguleri when a delegation of women from Nnewi under the umbrella of Umuwan Yuzukora Nnewi paid him a cut visit to trace the origin of Indigo. Well, according to the women leader, Ifoma Udogu, the mission of the women is to promote morals, values, and dignity among women, regretting the high rate of divorce in the society. Well, let's bring you a story about that visit as we talk more on the show. Obugad, the palace of the Azora, the 34th AZ, Akajiovo, Ibo, has the trappings of royalty and the ancient world, according to their history, is the origin of the Igbo people. These Newe women, like many other people in recent times, are here to seek more knowledge about the Igbo race as they engage the king and his council of chiefs in an interactive session. Then to a lecture by His Majesty Ezra the 34th to educate the women more about the Igbos and their origin. So, all the people who are here, the then to the question and answer session where the women freely interrogated the monarch. This flute boy also came with the father to meet with the monarch who is the custodian of the Igbo culture and for the women it is a time to restore the culture of Ndibu especially in younger women who are fastly influenced by Western civilization. Almost 75% of Nevis. No, no, And no one in the Nevis. The Equacorita, Sika Hambia, Kayan Week. But I know Bia, Cape Bless here, Haka, where we catch up with We accept them, we welcome them. They did the right thing, and there is something very, very peculiar with their visit. Their visit is linked up to what the Igbos are looking for. And that thing the Igbos are looking for was found at Newe, but it, is, it has not been cleared who or where and what. But you know, as <laughs> Igbo spirit is, we lit the fire. We rekindled the Igbo spirit some, about, about two months ago. And that Igbo spirit has been hovering around, bringing together Igbos, sons and daughters, wherever they are. The women ended their visit with a trip to these three trees, which is said to be close to three millennia, as it is believed to have grown in the grave of the second king of this ancient dynasty, who died in 956 BC. Iken Ameichi, TVC News, Enugu Aguleri, Anambra State. 
Well, it's interesting to see uh, how interesting the history of the Igbo nation uh, emanated from. Aguleri, no doubt, represents uh, a very, very strategic place uh, in the history of uh, the Igbo race across the world. But let's look at some of the uh, implication of that story and some talking points from that story, especially the remarks made by the AZ, uh, Chukwemeka Eri, pointing out that uh, the Igbo nation needs an arrowhead like a traditional seat that will be looked upon by everybody with respect and could be a rallying point for the entire Igbo nation, especially at this time when there are lots of agitation and divisive sentiments across the, 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 the Igbo nation. Mm -hmm. Is this time that this call for a central focus, a seat of power that everybody can look forward to? It made a reference to the caliphate yeah. that the yeah. Aousa nation, or the I mean, northern Nigeria, mm -hmm needs a rallying point, they go to the caliphate and they find a solution to all their issues. Yeah. Uh, maybe in, 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 down south, perhaps Ife and Oyo represents that um, authority. It's about time that the Igbo nation also rally around and look at that, that very, very important point made by the Eze, Chukwemeka yeah, of Aguilera. I, I think one thing we should realize is that culture is the greatest immunity for the black man against um, globalization the negative aspect of globalization. Once we lose our culture and our heritage, mm. our humanity, our being and essence, it's gone. Then we are five, we are no human beings. So, and I think in the Southeast, there is a very wrong conception that because there is no central king in the manner of uh, your, uh, or, you know, your empire, um, you know, uh, Bini empire, that the people don't have a monarchy system. It's not true. You see, what, I, I, what they are doing now, I think, is trying to revive an acclaimed culture that people have viewed with contempt over the years. Because Anambra is more or less the city of, is the state of, you know, Igbo civilization. And I think scientists have actually proved this to be right, that there was a bronze that was discovered in Anambra, I think Igbo Upo, which dated back to 9th century. You know, very beautiful bronze that was made by whom and beings who live in that territory. And the agriculture says that Eri is the godfather of the Igbo nation who gave back to Agulu. And then from there you have Aguleri. And every Igbo person, to a large extent, traces the origin to that ancestor. So, and I think it's very important in talking about a people's heritage, not just to think that, oh, we don't even have history. So I think what the traditional law, if we listen to what he was saying in Ibo, which we interpreted into, he's saying that, look, we must retain our culture. That if we, that is the only thing we can use as a rallying point. Because even when there is dissenting views, there is violence and all that, there must be a cultural thing that unites everybody. It is specific of political, cultural affiliations. There must be something that we all respect mm. that should be able to guide us when we are going astray. Mm. So I think it's a very good thing that they are trying to revive it. And it's also linked to the Igbo language, you know, reviving the Igbo language, reviving the Igbo ways of life, reviving the Igbo festival. And I think what we are talking about, we are talking about bringing back our civilization. Mm, mm. So I think I'm really happy with what the king is doing. And it's just, it should not be a one-off thing. There should be institutional backing. You know, there should be okay. support from state governors mm. to, I mean, to rally around this kind of, uh, you know, effort to bring back uh, a, a, a culture that seems to be, you know, um, going away. Mm. All right, Dari, let, let's look at the roles of traditional rulers in the current uh, political system in Nigeria. Many of them are most likely ceremonial. Uh, but, of course, it's expected that these traditional rulers will be the custodian of culture and uh, the heritage of the people. Uh, for many, uh, it appears like um, colonization took a whole lot from our history. But at this point in time, is it now time for, uh, for us to sit down as a people, either we are from the southeast, from the south-south, or even from the north, that we need to incorporate our traditional rulers in the scheme of things for the preservation of our culture and heritage as a people? Yeah, that's a topic that I've been on for a long time. <laughs> traditional rulers have called that, give us tax to do in governance. Experts have identified the need to involve traditional rulers in governance. Situations have pointed to the fact that, look, if you have these traditional rulers as part of governance, a lot of problems will be avoided, not even solved, avoided. So it's not something coming new, like I said earlier. However, 
you must also understand that uh, democracy is fashioned after our books, to put it that way, meaning our laws. Unless our laws are amended to accommodate certain things, including, it's not limited to rules for traditional rulers, it's be difficult. It is not something we can wake up and just do. It's okay, we have agreed, let's have it. No. We must tinker with our laws. We must check our books, make amendments, and I mean, give them roles to play. It's not just to say you're part of it. They must be actively engaged in being part of governance. And talking about the kind of societies we have in Nigeria, we are not, our societies are not the same from one end to the other. So it's going to be easy bringing in traditional reliance from some part, while it will be more difficult in some others, giving the systems mm. being operated. It happened when the colonial masters came, when they tried indirect rule, which is using traditional systems to get the people. It worked very well in some places. It worked partially. It worked perfectly in the north, according to history. It was a partial success in the southwest. I mean, Yoruba land. We are, well, there are kingship systems before and there, but there were limits. Even in Oyo, we had Oyo Messi that can limit the powers of the king. I love you. Mm -hmm. You know, understand? In some other civilizations in the southwest, they, there are places where the king does not rule alone. So it was partially successful here. In the southeast, it was a total failure. Why and how? History told us that because of the republican nature of the Igbos. These are people who are long before you started talking about democracy. They were Republicans. They, they had a system where every man was the head of his own household. So that's something he is not willing or ready to easily relinquish to anybody. So by the time they started bringing, uh, they call them something chiefs, warrant chiefs, the people revolted. You know? This warrant chief, we know him. He's the head of that uh, house or that clan. He cannot be the head of all of us. So nature, system, Culture, tradition will also determine also when we continue this call for let us have traditional rely in getting, but we must consider that it is not going to be by fiat. The success will not be uh, uh, general. It will succeed in some places. And so we must first sit down, tinker with our books and laws in a way that we can have a uniform success. Okay, whatever applies here should apply here or why this will apply here, over there. The, in the First Republic, mm. there were house of ships in some places and they were not in some places because people understood how these things can work. So I believe very strongly that while it is good to talk, the Eze who was talking made a, a session. They said the Eagles are the king, but they have refused to identify with him. Mm. That speaks volume. And that is something we must be cautious in delving into because... Interpretation, understanding, acceptance of these values and cultures and traditions differs from one okay. end of Igbo land to, to the another. other. So, well, well, let's look at some other talking points from that. Um, I mean, story uh, beyond the, I mean, the history or the roles of traditional rulers. Yeah. One of the uh, calls made at that event was cultural transmission, where most um, tra most institutions now refer to our own dialect as vernacular. Mm. Uh, the woman who led the mission said, the Igbo child now does not even know how to speak the Igbo language. Yeah. Even the women mm. now embrace Western yeah, culture the to the detriment of African culture. Mm. Is it time for us as a people to look ourselves in the face and say, if we do not embrace our own, we're heading for a doomsday? There's no doubt about that. Because across the world, they are about, according to the UN, you know, working group on indigenous people. There are about 3,000 languages that are facing extinction. extinction. And most of them are languages in Africa. And language is the expression of invisible thoughts, not just visible thoughts, physical and cosmological knowledge, epistemology of things you can see and things you cannot see. So when that language is lost, you know, names for plants, names for animals, names for a lot of things, varieties of plants and animals, 
once you are losing those things, you are losing the ability to communicate with nation. And that is all over the world. People are fighting towards reviving indigenous language. And I think, you know, we have a lot to do. First of all, we must recognize that each, each person, is, you know, by nation, has his own language given to him by creation. Why is it that, the, you know, there was an experiment that was carried out at the University of Ife by Professor Fafunwa and some others. They used Yoruba language to teach students from primary school to secondary school and then to university. Mm -hmm. All the students came out in A's to an experiment some years back. I think Ken Debagbeton, former commissioner, he was one of those students. They came out in A's. To show them in their mother tongue. Yes, in their mother tongue. Mm. So look at what India is doing now. They want to ensure that every person in India, you know, they will use the traditional language to teach them from primary school to university. Look at Japanese. It's their language. They are uh, you know, very good in technology, in science, in art, but they use their language. In China, Mandarin, that's the language that they use. They don't, they don't, you, can, you can see professors of engineering in China. He doesn't know how to speak English. In Russia, the great nations, Norway, Finland, they speak their own traditional language. So why must we throw our language away? You know, we must realize that people that are taught in their natural language, they are more likely to be more knowledgeable than even the English we are talking about. We, we, if, if you start speaking English in UK, US, people have to strain their ears to listen to you. Then you go to primary school, secondary school, they say, oh, flogging is speaking vernacular. That's contentious of our history. It's, it's, you know, it's a kind of colonial mentality. And I, I think most of our institutions are biting into this. When I, I, I went to UNN, at UNN, in our first year, when you are studying, you have to pick German or French, who are never taught Igbo language. If I had been taught Igbo language, it would have been more useful to me today. So, you know, we, a lot of things need to change. Our educational system, the superb, the primary education system, our language must not allow to die. We must not allow our language to die. It was given to us by, by God, and once we lose that language, we have lost our immunity. We are not going to have any respect anywhere that we go all over the world. Wow. Uh, I mean, that was a very good submission there from yeah. Adiri. But I, I want to have your thoughts quickly, Dari, as we move on to the other topics. Um, the challenge is now cast before us all. It's either we allow our languages and our culture to die. But let's go back to individual homes, which they say charity begins from. Mm -hmm. What should parents and custodians should do, realizing that they are also custodians of culture, starting from their homes? Yeah, well, I think uh, parents know better now. Uh, during our time when this vernacular business started, parents at home were forced. Because you cannot imagine your child being flogged every day in school because he speaks Yoruba. So parents at home were forced to encourage their children to speak English so that he can conform when he gets to school. But gradually, we saw the impact of that. But of recent, I know I learned that uh, there has been a reintroduction of history as a subject in school. And then I also learned that there is an effort to encourage the teaching in our schools in uh, mother local tongue, languages, mother tongues. Uh, mother tongues, as it were. Uh, it, it's just these are signs that probably we, and when I say we, I mean all of us as a people, government, the governed citizens, and the rulers, are beginning to realize the fact that we are losing something tangible which is our language. So if gradually we are coming back, because there's little or nothing the home can do except the authorities encourage the home to encourage the child to speak uh, mother tongue. Because if I am sure that my child needs English and not mother tongue in school to conform with his mates and his teachers, I would rather help him. It's in every home, you see this strange happening. And Adekunle, a Yoruba boy, cannot speak Yoruba. Chimezie cannot speak Igbo. And is very proficient in both English and French. Ayodele can speak German. He has learned a lot of Latin. But he cannot speak Yoruba. <laughs> that is Yoruba, the general language. Ask a child from Ijebu to speak the local dialect. You'll be shocked. He has never heard it before. When he hears people saying he has his mother, what foreign language are they speaking? It, 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 is, it is such that we have lost so much and gained very little. 
mm. in this cultural exchange that we did for years because I see it as an exchange. We gave out our oath and took their oath. And if you see the way foreigners study our languages, you'll be amazed. The way people study and practice our cultures outside the chores of our land, you'll be shocked. If they didn't find something good or beautiful in it, would they be after it? So mm. it's clarion call on all of us. We must not allow our languages and our cultures to die. And mm. we should do the very best we can to, to sustain their continuity.